So you were a Vegas visitor. This was your place to come and hang and have fun before you moved in to do what you're doing now. Yeah, you know, I came here for work. I came for conventions. I came here for parties. I came here for Super Bowl, March Madness, a lot of sporting events, boxing matches, and... Uh, and, uh, you know, that feeling that you're all, all excited, you know, you're thinking about a 72 hours till you go, 48 hours. And, you know, next day you're packing up and, and, and you know, that, that, that feeling is something that always really stuck with me. It does to this day, thinking about, oh, think about, like, today. There's so many people that are getting on an airplane coming to this city today. How awesome is that? Yeah, right. No, it's so great. So this, this magic that you're creating, I want to talk not only about the TV show, but what's the, this huge, uh, well, the mystery that surrounds all of these properties you brought up, and uh, if you can talk about as much as you can about that as well. Um, because again, come from a guy like you, the atmosphere in the hotel is pure fun, you know, and, and nothing against the strip, because uh, that's great too, but that corporate feel, I'm just not into it, you know, I'm not into that real, and this is about what Vegas is kind of always been supposed to be. Yeah, you know, I think that the one thing that's great about what you're seeing in downtown and this revitalization along Fremont Street and everything, I think this really adds to, to you know, all the offerings in Las Vegas. I mean, I think it's very important that there's continued to be growth, and it's great to see, you know, a hockey team got announced, and, you know, the T-Mobile Arena, what MGM did with that is terrific, and I can't I can't wait to see what Steve Wynn does, you know, on, on his golf course uh, area. I mean, just such a visionary. And, and with what we're doing down here, we're, we're, we're creating we're creating another vibe that I think is pretty cool, you know. Open uh, open alcohol 24 hours a day out on Fremont Street. It's a big, big street party, and uh, everybody's smiling. And I think that that's, that's really my takeaway at the end of the night. Uh, obviously, I get all the numbers, you know, you know, up to the minute all the time. But but when you get to see everybody coming out and smiling and excited about being here, that, 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 that kind of tells you, okay, we're kind of going down the right path. Now let's keep pushing it. It's a, and what you've created with the long bar, and I mean, that's just because it's so, uh, it's just epic fun. You know, I know a lot of people meet, that, that's their meeting spot, and they end up, that's where, you know, you don't end up going anywhere else. I didn't yeah. the night right there, you know, yeah. so it's just all that kind of uh, signature fun that you're off. Uh, you know, when, when, when the things uh, happen and the stars align, we had an opportunity to buy Las Vegas Club. Uh, you know, um, I, I would say we, we had uh, we had eight years of being ready. Uh, it, and uh, when that opportunity came last year, uh, we were able to purchase that. And that was in August of uh, 2015. And, uh, you know, in our in our operations meetings, I actually mentioned to uh, to everybody, I said, you know, now that we bought this, guess what? We're not going to talk about it for a little while. Just because I didn't want to start thinking about renovating or potentially tearing things down until until we, we, we had an opportunity to see whether or not we could maybe round out the block. There's a t-shirt shop there, and then there was a, uh, there was, um, um, you know, the, the Mermaid's uh, Casino, then there was the, uh, the uh, Girls of Glitter Gulch, and kind of worked on that deal for a while, and then that all came together. So now we can actually go to work on it, because now we've got the entire city block, and it just changes the scope of, of what can be designed. So now our creative, uh, creative juices are flowing and we're having a little bit of fun uh, uh, designing, sketching and all that type of stuff. Uh, you'll see me almost every night now with a with a pad of paper and, and, and pen and I'm, just, I'm, I'm always scribbling something down. Wow, now I know, okay, and I know there's only certain things you can say at this point in time, so the evolution is happening right now as we speak, but uh, are we looking at a, a, a full-fledged resort going in the next month? Well, you know, I mean, that's certainly what certainly what we, we'd like to do, um, but, but um, you know, I, I can actually tell you, I don't know what's, how it's going to play out because a lot of how this is going to play out is is through this design evolutionary process that we kind of go through. So there's things that create influence, um, you know, morning, noon, and night. So like tonight with this concert, if we have 5,000 people at the event center, you know, seeing how they react, seeing seeing what they do once the concert's over, then how they react on the Fremont Street and where they go and how they're smiling. All those little things have a big impact on my on my mind, and and uh, and really on our team, we're all kind of thinking about different little things. So so it's 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 currently in the process of evolving, but but you know it's fair to say that that whatever we end up doing, I mean we we uh, we really really enjoy um, putting smiles on people's faces and creating a high energy atmosphere. That that's something I think that uh, that from a theme basis. However, that plays out. That's going to be a, that's going to be a key part of uh, the new resort program. Great. Well, we'd love to follow along yeah. as this evolves. Sure, sure. Information can come out, but it's very exciting the creative process. And you know, I know that 
obviously by the atmosphere and what is provided to us as guests, people that return as customers, is you've offered something so unique and so fresh and new here in downtown, yet it just it ties into all of that stuff that people want in Vegas, you know, and I think that's uh, so key. You know, and it's, it's funny because... Um, I, I don't think that there's any real one right answer on, on how to do this. And you study how, you know, the, how, how Caesar's Palace got developed, and then even go back further, how the Flamingo got developed, and then how the Mirage, and then Treasure Island, and, and then uh, and then uh, MGM and, and Excalibur, and then and then with Steve Wynn going over buying the Desert Inn, and how it turned into the wind, and then announcing Encore right away. And that you know, I think every process is different, depending upon the time and the era and how customers feel and and I think whenever you design something um, the moment you design it you wish you, you wish you added something or you tweak something else out but but just think about think about how how technology impacts um, hotel and casino and beverage and food concepts and design today compared to 10 years ago the technology is so much different so many more people like like they have automated elements the amount of the amount, I mean, now people have uh, oftentimes three to five electronic devices per person. Yeah, right. The old, day, you know, the old days of designing a hotel where you had one plug, you know, that, I mean, obviously it's, it's, it's evolved now, but now you need all these different outlets and you need, you need access and things have to be immediate and you have to have the best Wi-Fi and you have to be, you have to be quick and you have to have people have the ability to check in and check out quickly. And there's, a, there's so many other so dynamics many and, uh, and it's fun. And it's also uh, scary and intimidating thinking about, you know, oh my God, I'm reading more tech tech magazines and, and different, I mean, I've got enough, I actually have people now reading like 10 different, you know, from 10 different areas, give me ideas, 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 because I hate for something to come up once we get all the way down the path, like, oh my God, we've got some game changing thing happen and we didn't know about it. So, so it's actually, it's actually fun, challenging, exhilarating, and a little scary. It's, it's great that you get, because that's a, you really kind of explain and give, give us a chance to kind of step in your shoes, you know, in, in a certain way for a moment. I've always wondered, though, because this question I was thinking of driving over today, as a kid, right, did you ever, as a dreamer, you know, back before you knew what you were going to be in this and that way, did you ever think, like, hey, man, I could have a casino in Vegas, I could have built something. Was that ever in front of I will be honest with you. It never crossed my no, mind. Never it, nev it never. That was not. I mean, I I I the standard uh, standard. You know, fireman. Uh, um, well, I was actually enamored with the garbage men. My my. Uh, my I was too. I, 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 I actually thought that was the coolest thing to start with. As time went by, you know, I got into business, and uh, you know, I love numbers. I love math, and I, and I and I love being around people, and. Um, you know, just kind of one of those things that that, that that happens. The same thing, evolutionary process. But I can't say when I was a 14 year old kid, this was this was what I was thinking about. Okay, I have one other question, and that is about Vegas. Um, your very first trip to Vegas, your very first visit, whether it was I will Vegas never forget it. Yeah, I will never forget that trip at all. I had a summer job, and I was working working on computer boards, just just you know, kind of fixing them and cleaning them. I was uh, 16 years old, I'm sorry, 17 years old, and um, um, I got into an accident, I broke my arm, so I couldn't do that job, and there was about, there was about three weeks left of the summer, and uh, what ended up happening was um, I had a buddy, and uh, we flew out to California, we, we somehow finagled our way to rent a car, because they thought he might have been 25, not me of course, but, but uh, we rented a car. <laughs> We flew to L.A. and we spent a couple days there and we drove to Las Vegas and we came in. We we're coming up the strip and um, I, I actually think that, that I, I, I had like $22 on me <laughs> and my buddy had about, had about, you know, about the same and, uh, and we saw a sign and it was at the dunes and it said rooms for $14. And we're like, well, we can afford, hey, man, we're going to spend a night in Vegas. So we go in, we spend the 14 bucks. I think we spent a dollar to learn how to gamble in, in the gift shop. And we went down and we started playing uh, playing uh, uh, black and red on roulette at a dollar a spin. We were partners in the whole thing. Well, as soon as we were up like 14 bucks, we bought the second night. And we knew we were in business. That's right. That's right. Actually, that that hit me on a couple different on a couple different levels that actually have touched me today. That was my very first my very first shrimp cocktail um, I ever had in Las Vegas. Right on, yes. And number two, the one of the 
well, the first slot machine I played at the Dunes, they had a Sigma Derby. And that, that's why when I came back to, to here to the D, I thought, what's the most iconic game? And I thought about the game that I played when I was a kid, and I thought, man, that's that that's the game. And that's that's really why I focused on trying to get Sigma Derby into here, into the D. And it took us a while to get it in. It took us over a year to get that game in. And uh, and that was really the connection, because it had to do with my very first trip to Las Vegas. Oh, cool. Great story. Wow. What, a, what an honor. Again, I really appreciate your time. And I was just saying, before we close out, is there just, uh, if you could just mention some of the highlights, you know, right now within the resort, you know, I mean, because you have Vintage Vegas upstairs, right? The Vintage Slot still is there. Yeah, yeah. That's on the second floor. People and... don't realize that's where yeah. you can get, like, the real coin uh, uh, games, which are nowhere. Else. Right, 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 right. You know? And, uh... You know, I mean, the one one great thing I think about the D is we, we uh, we've got uh, you know a broad range of uh, ways for people to have fun. Uh, if you uh, if you're into sports, uh, long bar is a great place to watch games. If uh, if you're into some fine dining, um, obviously I'm biased, but I but I but I think it's justified that it's the number one restaurant in all Las Vegas, and that's 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 the uh, Andiamo Italian Steakhouse and. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm real happy with the way that played out because everybody really loves it. 